We're going to turn now to Senegal, though, where opposition leader Basiru Djimafi has been uh, Fai, excuse me, has been named Senegal's next president after the country's ruling coalition conceded defeat in a nationwide election. The 44-year-old is set to become Senegal's youngest ever president. And he'd been in prison less than two weeks before the vote, which followed months of political turmoil in one of Africa's most stable democracies. In his victory speech, Fai promised to deliver a fresh chapter for Senegal. The people of Senegal have chosen to break with the past, to make real the immense hopes raised by our vision of society. I hope that this vision of society will bring about their aspirations. I pledge to govern with humility and transparency and to fight corruption at all levels. I pledge to devote myself fully to rebuilding our institutions and strengthening the foundations of our way of life together. And I'm very pleased to welcome Oluwole Ojewale, a Dakar-based regional coordinator for Central Africa at the Institute for Security Studies. Now, we've just heard President-elect Basiru Diomai Fai there, and he's not a particularly well-known figure. Uh, can you tell us just how well-prepared you think he is to take on a leadership of this country? Thank you so much for having me. Um, I think he has substantial experience in public service and then also have a lot of allies to rely upon, particularly in Sonko that propped him up for this position. So I, I think he's sufficiently prepared to um, enter the first office in the land and discharge his responsibilities that will be attached to that office. There are a lot of questions about uh, not having um, political experiences in the corridor of power. But I believe he's going to um, take charge of that and then deliver to the best of his capability. Uh, we can't then play uh, on other things that people are really mentioning in terms of age and those experiences. So let's look at the challenges uh, that lay ahead for him. What do you think will be the most crucial issues that Fai is facing uh, when he takes up the role of president? The first is the economic realities that is really biting in terms of youth employment. That is ripe in Senegal. There is also the need for development across sector in education, in health, security, and otherwise. But much more important are the issues of the last three years, which really characterize political development here. So there is a need for grand legislative reform that is going to probably devolve the presidential power uh, in the country. And then to also fight corruption, which I think has been the bane of development in this country. Now, you mentioned that he does have allies. How helpful do you think they will be uh, in his efforts to take on corruption and to bolster the economy in Senegal? Yes, they want to break away from the hold holder. Uh, you know, these parties actually largely um, um, a, a youth-driven party. And I think they know the responsibility that is resting upon their shoulder now to really prepare Senegal to where it ought to be economically, to really prepare Senegal to be to where it ought to be within the region and sustain that democratic solidarity and ensure in particular that event of political uprising that have characterized this country in the last three years don't become the new norm going forward. That is the reason for that constitutional and legislative reform that they need to carry out in the country. And that must deliver the dividends of democracy to the people. Now, he himself is, is also quite young at just 44 years old. And you mentioned uh, he has a lot of support uh, from the youth. Can you tell us a little bit more about who exactly uh, was behind his campaign and who will be most happy to see him taking office? Well, I, I think uh, it is just like a case of an accidental precedent. I think barely a year ago, uh, Diomai Fai didn't think he was even going to become maybe prime minister or talk less of president. And event, the turn of events as a result of the incarceration of Sonko propelled him forward. And he should know the responsibility that is really lying on his, um, uh, I mean, that is lying on his shoulder now because he was largely propelled into this office through the vote of the people, the youth in particular. And it's also a protest vote, really, because of 
the, the recent event and the fact that people want to break away from the past. So he has secured overwhelming majority of the support of the youth, the subalterns, the workers' poor party, I mean, the workers' union labels and every nooks and cranny of the country where people have really galvanized this political support, democratic support, and it must not fail them. So it is a broad-based coalition consensus that actually brought him into power. And you can see heavyweight political um, giants like uh, Abdulwad also two days to the election, pledging support and solidarity for him. I think this is what he was able to galvanize to win this election. So a vote for change in Senegal. Thank you so much for joining us with that analysis. That is Oluwole Ojewale, a Dakar-based regional coordinator for Central Africa at the Institute for Security Studies. Many thanks. Thank you for having me.